All right, hello everyone, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 2 of Star Trek Fenrir. Now, for those unfamiliar, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We are set in the year 2412 aboard a Cerberus class in the Sabine Expanse. If you don't know what the Sabine Expanse is, it's basically all that space to the galactic west of Cardassia. You don't need to have watched our previous episodes to enjoy this one, but you might have a richer experience if you do. You can find the VODs for Fenrir on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, I have two announcements this week. Uh, the first is that uh, this week is going to be quite jam-packed with content. Uh, we've got Gengut and Depths of Trollius on Friday. And then on Saturday, we've got uh, Star Trek Matahari. So I would love it if you spread the word and turned out to support both the new and old shows alike. And of course, the second announcement is, you know, make sure to take care of yourself, stay healthy and safe and, you know, basically keep yourself going in today's world, uh, especially you, Mr. or Mrs. or whichever pronoun you prefer, anonymous bit bomber. Again, I'll find you one day. But with that, let's just uh, do what we usually do and have everyone go around and introduce themselves. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's John. Uh, I play Rast, the Betasoid Romulan uh, XO, as well as Tavi. So, <laughs> see you all here soon. Love it. Uh, I'm James. I play Lieutenant Zero, the Android Chief Engineer, and I don't have a supporting character yet. Uh, I'm Watney. I play Captain Brie Archuleta and the Denobulan Doctor LL. I'm Dag. I play Fenrir's holographic Vulcan science officer, and I have uh, my alternate is the wonderful ebullient Zeke, the Gorn. Uh, hey guys, I'm Aaron. I play. R.J. Williams, Fenrir's Chief of Security, as well as Hypochondriac Extraordinaire, uh, Lieutenant Jensen. And I'm Matthew. I play uh, Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin, one of the science officers on board the Fenrir, an ardent uh, servant of the Prophets. And um, I also play Cartwright, a Hydran security officer. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and run the intro video. Welcome back. Now, uh, something that I like having my players do is do an opening monologue such as a captain's log. And sure enough, the Commodore herself has today's log. So Watney, if you want to take it away. Sure thing. Captain's log, stardate 89035.4. The Fenrir returns back to the Sabine Expanse. Though our route is taking us to the north around the Tzenkethi <laughs> Coalition rather than opting for the more southerly corridor near Tholian space. Our path brings us close to the coordinates I assigned to the bright and bubbly Captain Jean as his secondary mission. 
a mission that involves investigating a Ferengi trying to sell perfect dilithium. The newest members of the crew are finding their place with time, although no transfer is without its missteps. A new ensign, Richardson, for example, was in charge of runabout maintenance. I set Rast on him after we got back. Hopefully he scared him straight. I don't think either of us wants to be stranded in a runabout together for the foreseeable future, regardless of how we get along. End log. All right. And our first scene is going to be in good old six aft. And present in six aft is going to be the Commodore and Commander Williams. And you all are discussing the day's events and more or less uh, whichever topics you so choose. So go ahead and take it away. Look, all all I'm saying is you couldn't get to Prin. No, I couldn't. I mean, obviously she was busy on well, a space station far away from our mess hall. I know. I guarantee you she would want to be on the frontier. I guarantee you. I just, I just, I, like, look, look at this. Does this look like for Tampa Studio? Because I don't, it's, this is corn. I mean, it's not even wiggling. It's corn. There's no like flavor. Corn. The green is wrong. It's, it's salty. It tastes more Klingon, honestly, than anything else. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. So, uh, do you hear the assignment I gave Captain Jean? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, he's going to hate it. I love it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I, I, I got to be honest, Bray. I expected you to snap him back for insubordination i mean just he just like he insulted you on your own break yeah but there might still be a chance you know at diplomacy all right i mean the i'm a commodore now i can't just go around throwing people in the brig for insubordination no you delegate you tell me to throw him in the brig Oh, okay. That's that's how that works. That's heavy as the head, but you know, at least you don't have to pull the cart. All right, so, I'll make sure I call you next time I get on the the horn with him. Because damn, now you're thinking like, like the brass, an ice, an ice block. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so what's new? Uh, not a whole lot. Like, um, how to go with you and Rast? You're, you mean the whole ooh. mutiny? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you mean I, them? I don't think it was, I don't think it was a mutiny, I think. Well, I mean, you know, given the fact that we mind melded, I would have assumed I saw it coming, but yeah, what's what's up with that? I mean, I don't know a lot about Vulcan philosophy or or metaphysics, but I mean, do, don't you guys have some kind of you know telepathic thing going on? Yeah, I you know, I think that was the thing before the mind meld even happened and but the way that Marak described it we you know growing up it was not at all like my experience so yeah I mean I, I read you know it's like this it's it's strange because the Vulcans normally aren't that poetic in their writing but the way they describe the mind meld is a very deeply spiritual mystical thing I don't know like did you did he do it wrong like is... no i think i definitely got what i needed well what was there it's just <sighs> i only raise my hand because it's right about then that a certain lieutenant commander lee tobin enters and uh say box to you all to see what's going on oh commander tobin hey RJ, uh, Commodore, 
uh, if you'll just excuse me for a moment, um, what, uh, actually, what are you eating there, Commander? It's supposed to be Rotamba stew, but it is most certainly not Rotamba stew. And I think you, maybe more than anybody in this room right now, would be able to back me up on this. Well, I can't uh, say that I've actually tried it from the replicators here, but I will say that their Hasperat is, uh, well, it's woefully bland. And if you know anything about Hasperat, that is the worst thing that you can ever say about it. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I kind of like the Hasperat here. Well, no offense, Commander, but uh, you are human. None taken. I believe that uh, one of the Federation reporters who initially sampled it for one of your uh, culinary magazines suggested that it was like fire wrapped in puff pastry. Yeah, mm. pretty much so we could just turn it down just a tad would be, and these replicators just nail it. But I mean, smell this stew. This isn't what Tom was like. Just smell it. I'm uh, not going to eat it. It's... I don't. I don't think I want to, Commander. Um, it, right. Um, I'm just gonna go get a drink. Excuse me for a minute. All right. Walk over to the replicator. Order um, Klingon fire wine, as he often does, and he will saunter on back, uh, taking the seat there. Uh, I hope I'm not interrupting a conversation. Uh, no, have a seat. We will. Yeah, sit down. Thank you. Yeah. So how's, uh, how's everything on the blue shift? Well, honestly, it's, uh, it's getting a little dry out here. Uh, I really would have rather us uh, gone off to investigate that collision of various different uh, stars, but uh, I, I do understand why the Fenrir is not best suited to that kind of mission. We are, after all, it seems a combat vessel. Hmm. Yeah, no argument from me. I mean, don't you think that Okita is more of a combat vessel than the Fenrir? Oh, oh no, come on. Give, give me that. I'm asking Lee. Oh. By design, perhaps, but our record seems to suggest otherwise. Hmm. Well, I'm glad I have an idealist on board. Keeps me in check, I'm sure. Well, Captain, if, uh, if I may be so bold, that's one of the reasons I'm on board this ship. Well, whatever your reason is, Lee, you're equipped for the job. And that's what matters, regardless of your feelings about leadership. Well, allow me to say, Captain, that whatever my feelings about leadership, I'll do my job. I know. It's right about then that uh, Archuleta, and only Archuleta, you hear a voice uh, sort of behind you, and it's very nondescript. It's, it's a barely audible whisper, I would say. And you turn to look, maybe to see, you know, the source of the sound. And, you know, other than just normal people in the mess hall, nothing. And every time you turn back to engage in the conversation, there's that whisper again. So, you know, uh, Commander Williams, uh, I was having a little conversation with Tavi and Lieutenant Cartwright. Uh, I understand that you really rather appreciate the galaxy class. Oh, are you kidding? Of course. Uh, I mean, Do you the, guys hear that? Uh, you hear what? It's just someone speaking back here. Back here. Are, are you suggesting that you're hearing voices, Commodore? <laughs> you know, I just might be. Maybe you ought to head to sick bay. <clears throat> uh, maybe I should uh, or lay off the tequila a little bit. Yeah. 
<laughs> also. Yeah. Um, I'll uh, leave you two to your fire wine. And I think you that's know, a- now that you yeah. oh, go ahead. Putting on some other alcohol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and speaking of, RJ's just gonna go over and put the Rotomba stew back in the replicator and recycle it into a into a fire wine. I love it. I think as, uh, you know, actors depart and Lee and Williams begin drinking together, we're going to transition to main engineering where the SAR and Zero are just about to engage in a conversation about all the power problems that the Fenrir has been experiencing lately. Mm. You are muted, Dag. That's for the listeners. They're taking count. Are you sure there is no residual effect on the bioneurogel packs from the photophage? I mean, according to the results that have so far been given to us by both the self-diagnostic of the bioneurogel uh, packs along with several engineers' reports, it seems that the lack of having hollow emitters both inside the conduits that they are located along with very few within the Jeffries tubes. It doesn't seem like the photophage had any ability to reach this, uh, the packs themselves. That is reassuring. What about the EPS relays? (laughs) Well, during the refit from the Ryzen experts, if you could call them that. There have been several power malfunctions along with a general heightened uh, level of the static electricity that has been interfering with a few devices here and there. Um, I've unheard from Lieutenant Allel if she has had any further issues with her medical devices. Andrew Williams has also reported intermittent energy loss in his armory energy packets. Could there be some kind of relation? There may be a relation. However, judging by reading Commander Maddox's reports regarding the armory, there is reason to believe that coming from Jupiter Station and from the Utopian uh, shipyards, the armory itself was placed in an area that is dampening to the EPS fields themselves. And so with its location, it just may need to have other conduits ran towards its location for power to be generated as necessary. Perhaps we can use the master systems display to map all of the energy issues and see if there's a correlating provider to each of those places. A conduit, uh, maybe just an actually faulty gel pack, some other kind of flux interference and the SAR will go to the master systems display and start mapping all of the energy problems okay. to see if there's a correlation. So that's going to take you a little bit of time. Uh, but while you're doing that, also, Dag, you are a little bit quiet today. I know your your microphone is going that in and out thing. Just wanted to let you know. Uh, but while uh, you're doing that, Vassar, uh, Zero, you sort of uh, look to the door opening into main engineering and in walks a perhaps grumpy looking Mr. Rast. Commander um, Rast, is everything well with you? Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, have you had a chance to speak with Ensign Mare? Mm, she has been on shuttle duty and has also apparently had to report to the medical bay regarding a injury of some kind that she received working on the shuttle that yourself and the com- Commodore uh, brought back. Oh, I've already 
dressed her down quite a bit, um, but hopefully, um, hopefully under your guidance, she can actually become less of a liability. If I may interject just real quick, Ensign Murray is a dude. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully. I just the... went with it. <laughs> yeah. Like it... <coughs> eh, whatever. Um, <laughs> well, Commander, I am sure that I can speak with her. I can speak with him. And there can be a discussion along with a reevaluation of current abilities. Um, reading yourself in the Com Commodore's logs as to what occurred on the shuttle and the resulting uh, damage that was found that had not been repaired. I'm sure that there will be mm, a few simulations of repairing a shuttle in the entire shuttle bay cruise near future. Very well. Thank you, Lieutenant. That's right about then. That Vassar, I would like you to roll me a control and engineering, please. Difficulty of zero. Right. Control. Engineering. What happened to my roller? There it goes. One success. So you get one momentum. What you see, Vassar, is that according to the Master Systems display, over 80% of the ship is experiencing power fluctuations. But that can't be right because something other than the MSD would be going off. Like, there's no way that what the MSD is displaying is correct. Pardon me. Mr. Zero, would you be able to corroborate these findings? The MSD is showing that the entire, most of the ship, approximately 80% is experiencing energy fluctuations, and that cannot be possible. Zero will walk over and just kind of study the, uh, he'll study the MSD for a minute. I mean, even speaking even speaking as hypothetically as possible, no power line should be able to, would be able to constantly emit a specific amount of energy constantly. There would always be fluctuations, but to this extent this over this, over this massive of a scale, it, it would be as if the source itself was an issue. Um, Man. Commander Rast, we seem to be experiencing some kind of anomalous energy fluctuations throughout the ship. Recommend we take uh, unimportant systems to low power mode for the time being. Well, the issue with that is that if we lower power to the low priority items, we don't want the power to all of a sudden overpower and short out going towards the higher priority systems the lower priority systems we could probably use as a way to funnel some of this energy to try to fluctuate almost act as a buffer we could run some tests to determine uh, any kind of severity that would result in reducing power to one portion of the ship Perhaps we could activate all of the ship's holodecks to see um, what degree of energy can be shunted away from these fluctuations. I think that's a uh, perfect scene transition. So our next scene is actually going to take place about two days later. Uh, all of you are uh, more or less on the bridge. The only one who is not there is Mr. Zero. Uh, but, uh, Williams, uh, you are getting a uh, notification that a Ferengi vessel in the area is hailing you. Captain, we've got an incoming hail from a 
Decora class Ferengi cruiser. Uh, on screen, please. Appearing on screen is your stereotypically large lobed Ferengi. And uh, he does sort of that capitulating gesture where he puts the two wrists together. And he says, ah, it's Commodore Archuleta. I had heard that you were coming in this direction. And I wished to offer my services. Uh, um, may I, I ask for your name since you so clearly know who I am? Ah, my apologies. I am Damon Papox. Papox, pleasure to meet you. What services are you offering? Well, if you're coming out this way, you must be interested in the perfect dilithium. Um, she's, she's gonna turn and like ask to mute <laughs> her. Um, who else is on the bridge? Uh, everybody but zero. Okay. Um, she's going to turn to Lee and be like, that doesn't exist, right? <laughs> well, the crystalline lattice structure of dilithium would render anything rem remotely approaching perfection impossible. The spiral nature of the molecules that make up dilithium crystals um, essentially is inherently unstable. So short answer, right. yes. Okay. Uh, she'll motion to resume the audio uh i would like to see a sample of this well you're in luck i anticipated your needs and i have a crate of the stuff ready to give to you i'm not accepting it i just want to inspect it well simply give me coordinates and i will beam it over very well uh she'll cut the feed and then mm -hmm. Asked us to um, to erect a uh, like a quarantine field on the replicator or transport pad, <laughs> and then asked to send a sample there if Zeke is around. Zeke would be around if he would care to reply in character. I got you. No worries. I got this. Captain, All right, what, uh, yes, if I might ahead. say one thing, mm -hmm. you're familiar with rule of acquisition 218. Sometimes what you get for free costs entirely too much. Um, I would urge caution in this matter, as you seem to be displaying, but nonetheless. So the Ferengi willing to give away anything is a big red flag, Captain. I am just curious about what this is. I'm not accepting anything and... I was quite verbal about that, so. Add a character to Mike, is the ship still experiencing the intermittent energy fluctuations? It is. Would Vassar be able to run a simulation to make sure there's no craziness that happens in the transporter since we're transporting an energy source? Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me a insight in science, difficulty of one. Any uh, specialty here? Focus. If you have transporters, uh, if you have quantum dynamics or mechanics. Quantum mechanics. Look at that. Three successes, so you get two momentum. Strangely enough, uh, you think that as long as a certain Zeke controls the power to the transporters in a appropriate fashion, shouldn't be an issue. Captain, I have a concern about transporting an energy source under the conditions of the energy fluctuations the ship has been experiencing for the last two days. Um, I would like to instruct uh, Petty Officer Zeke to maintain a much more precise focus on the matter stream in order to ensure a successful materialization. Would it make you feel better if I went over there? That may not be within the best realm, considering the Ferengi's motives. Seems friendly enough, but I take your point. Um, make sure you keep an eye on the energy stream. Yes. 
Mm. I may suggest, Captain, that we could beam a sample to a shuttlecraft using it as an isolated environment off the ship and conduct some preliminary investigation of the so-called perfect dilithium there. I like that idea better. Let's do it. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and say that you launch uh, one of the runabouts simply because they would have uh, much better facilities to conduct what you're about to conduct. So uh, if I read the room correctly, I would assume Mr. Zero would be going. Uh, I'm going to have Zeke go because obviously someone needs to handle the transporting process. Then uh, I let's ask this. Williams, who would you send from security or would you even send security with them? Oh, I think I think I would. And as a matter of fact, I would probably send Mr. Tavi. OK, so Mr. Tavi will be there as well. <laughs> Got to get him some field experience. All right. And then uh, let's see, who am I missing? So we need a possible character if the captain wants to come along. And then one for Matthew. Which ones would you guys like to bring along? Bree will go. Bree will go. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, Tobin would as well, given that we need somebody with science background. All righty. Let's see. Where did I put Tobin? There he is. We're all crammed in like a runabout. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Like you're, you're definitely <laughs> crammed least brought, in there. At least you brought the small guy. All right. So uh, we're going to cut to the runabout interior as you all are very much crowded around one of the transporter pads within the runabout. And uh, you get a green light, Zeke, from the Ferengi vessel. They are ready to transport. Right. Standing by for transport. Here we go. All right. So, Zeke, I need you to roll me a control and engineering and I think, do we have a runabout sheet? We do, the Hades class runabout. If someone could get me a, I'm trying to remember what it is off the top of my head, uh, sensors and engineering from the runabout. And the difficulty is a two. Um, As he transports it, oh, once he transports it over, I want to put up a... Uh, a force field? Force field. Okay. All right, so no help from the runabout. Okay. I'm going to let this succeed at cost, meaning I'll get two threat from this. So, uh, materializing on the pad is a about a half meter by half meter crate. Uh, it is almost gunmetal green and is otherwise actually a fairly expensive looking case. As in, it is without blemishes. Its surface is very smooth. No nicks, no tears. Um... And there is even a uh, almost like a clasp that you can see. It's a very ornamental clasp. Uh, it's almost like if you were to take a Ferengi's ears and in intermingle them into almost like a heart shape. But transport complete successfully. Hey, any transport you can walk away from is a good one, right? Well, I don't think that this box will be walking anywhere, Petty Officer. Yeah, not a bad job there, Brooklyn. Hey, at least somebody respects my work. Your work is very respectful. Your jokes, on the other hand, leave much to admire. Um, I would suggest maybe speaking with Commander Vassar. He tends to bring a laugh out. Don't make me beam your emotion ship into space. Yeah. You know, as a robot, you don't really have much of a comedy bone in your body anyway. I think is hilarious. So See, there's a the box Commodore on the transporter was... pad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, I would like to take a medical scan of it just to see if I can detect anything that is emanating from it that might be dangerous to us, uh, some form of radiation running through the various different spectra. Okay. Reason medicine, difficulty of one. So I will use augmented ability reason. Okay. For one free success and two d20. Um, subspace dynamics. Sure, I'll let it happen. Hmm, interesting. So you succeed, but there's a complication. 
So, you know, you run your tricorder over the box, everything's checking out green, no radiation to worry about, no bioweapons involved, you know, just a crate. However, the complication is that the box begins to open on its own. Ooh. You got that Tabby force field, it. yeah? Tavi pulls out his out his phaser. Mm -hmm. And as Point, the boy to get at the box. And as the box opens up, uh, it's almost like a uh, like a lotus flower, where it sort of forms into seamless petals that then swirl and open up to reveal this small little pedestal. And sitting on the pedestal is a dilithium crystal, purple in color, that's about the size of, let's say, Zeke's hand. So it's a fairly sizable crystal. Um, but it's just sort of sitting there. And nothing else happens. This is a remarkably ornate piece. It's almost like it's meant to be a display rather than a functional transportation case. Well, mm. the thing is, is with the Ferengi, if we were not as hesitant as we were, but imagine if we were, imagine if this was the first humans to have come out of Earth, seeing something like this, especially to a materialistic based uh, peoples. Something like this would be that showmanship that would probably secure Ferengi with a very well trade. However, the so the expansive showmanship leaves much to wonder if on the validity of the identity of this crystal. Yeah, it's just retail packaging. What he said. What a barbaric and deceptive practice. <clears throat> Regardless, um, can I take another scan of the crystal to see uh, or to ascertain its nature? Is it quote unquote perfect? Is this structure different from that which I would anticipate to see in a, a, a normal daylight crystal and the like? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I would say that one other person that can assist you, uh, if you so wish, this is going to be a reason and a science for Lee uh, if Zeke or Zero assists, it would be a reason engineering. If Tavi assists, that's a reason security. And Bree, if you assist, it's a uh, presence science. And could I take a moment uh, to essentially run through the scans that I had made originally of the, the box and mm -hmm. uh, try to account for whatever it was that I did to uh, accidentally set it off? So sure. that I can avoid that again. And basically, I'm trying to sell you on using mental repository. You can do it. Uh, um, if I didn't say the difficulty, the difficulty is a two. Zero will assist. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is by basically checking uh, the way that it's set up to the way dilithium have been set up for hundreds of years at, at this point. Mm -hmm. And just seeing, you know, is there a way that this could be on the exterior faked. Oh, sh okay. Wow. Wow, that is already four successes from Lee. Five, actually, because you have augmented. Uh, so, yeah, zero. Let's see if you get any more momentum. I think Game we should be at zero, though. Um, no, we have no. three we have momentum, three? so that's okay. the two more right there. I'm not going to argue for power systems, even though technically that lithium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So total of four successes, which means I believe you're up to five momentum. And Mr. Cart or Mr. Lee, I'm going to give you access. Zero since you assisted. Both of you should now see a perfect dilithium analysis that you may disseminate as you see fit. Uh, Tavi is also making it a point to stand between Bree and the box. Okay. Her knees see. are protected, at least. <laughs> Zeke has a that hot was... claw and emergency beam out to space, just in case. A gotcha. hot claw. <laughs> nice. What's the name of a band? Commander Lee, judging by the setup of this crystal... 
it seems from at least my library that it's very similar to the dilithium that Voyager used back in the Delta Quadrant. Are you familiar? Yes, I think that every Starfleet medical officer is familiar with the fantastical tales of the Starship Voyager, wherein Tom Paris, I believe it was, traveled faster than Warp 10 and started to hyper-evolve into some form of lizard-like creature. Yes, I, I am aware from that from both a medical perspective and a scientific one. And rest assured, that's just nonsense. But regardless. And uh, if I take thing, your meaning, sorry, Commander. The thing please. is, though, is that there is always the theory. And as we have seen throughout history, if enough people decide to go after a theory, eventually somebody gets it right. Um, how similar is this crystal to the crystal used by Tom Paris, if there are readings? Uh, that should be the second paragraph, actually. Should it be? Yeah. Well, I, I do understand what you're saying, Commander. This seems to be a dilithium crystal of the same nature as the one discovered by the Starship Voyager purportedly in their logs. Um, given their experience... Even if this crystal is as perfect as is implied, we wouldn't want to push to warp 10. But Commodore, it does seem that the Ferengi was being honest. Hold on. Ferengi and honesty are typically, while he may be honest about this, he may not have been honest about his intentions to give us this. Well, that is true. As rule of acquisition 48 states, the bigger the smile, the sharper the knife. With this uh, diamond, we might be able we might be able to take the warp factor from nine point nine seven five and push it to nine point nine two. Uh, basically, one light year an hour. The thing is, is that with who it's coming from, I would suggest we use it on a much smaller vessel that isn't the Fenrir, in case that it is a setup. Uh, well, I have no interest in, <laughs> I'm not in a big enough hurry to get anywhere to where I would use a, this on any engine <laughs> on a shuttle or, or Fenrir herself. Um, I was merely curious if he was telling the truth. Yes and no. So it's like space nitrous. Mm, I understand the metaphor and or the simile and mm, yeah, that would be a good way to explain it. Where would one of these crystals form? Is there even a set of conditions under which perfect dilithium can be created it would have to have been during the refining process the handout does not contain that information so you may feel free to make it up uh, typically whenever dilithium is harvested and then refined uh, just as the same way that whenever you have to calculate energy of how a machine would work, you have to also include the energy used to dissipate heat to um, friction and all the other such items is basically the same way that you would have to look at how a piece of dilithium is before and after being refined. Um, not only would this have to have probably come from a much more reformed version of dilithium the refining process in order to keep it at such a high level would also have been would also have to be something that is unknown at least currently to starfleet and allies all right um well, I don't want him to think that we are keeping this. Commodore, if I may, uh, 
this could represent a spectacular discovery. If we learned how these crystals formed, the unique radiogenic properties on the planet in which these crystals were refined, whatever it might be, we could fundamentally transform the way in which we travel through space. The issue is, is the questionable honesty and the questionable integrity of the Ferengi race in general. How do we know that this isn't something that was requisitioned through less desirable means if we attempted to find its course and then attempted to not only utilize these crystals how do we know that we are not aiding pirates or other nefar other non-starfleet value uh trade williams archuleta Go ahead. Commodore, uh, we're receiving an urgent distress call. There's a medical emergency at Taiwan 6, and uh, it seems the time is a factor. We're the only ship in the area. All too convenient. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, how How far is it? This is where I step in. Uh, so anyone who cares to look at a pad or a uh, display can see that Tyvan 4 is approximately three light years away. Um, but I would say, because I forgot to give Williams this bit of information. Basically, this is one of those medical emergencies where if it's not handled within six hours, there might not be a colony remaining. So the quicker you get there, the better. Commodores. How close is the USS Clement? Not close enough. Okay. Commodore suggestion. Yes. You're going to suggest that we put this in our warp drive, aren't you? Secondary Do you want to be a slave to a Ferengi for the rest of your life? Well, the secondary suggestion would be to invite the Ferengi, to invite this specific Ferengi and maybe a couple other of his uh, cohorts onto our ship, utilize the dilithium crystal to get to the medical emergency. And then if something sideways happens, I mean, we have three hostages. Ah, uh, okay. I see where you're going. Uh, open a channel. Um, go ahead, Lee. I think you've been wanting to say something for a while. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander, uh, despite the severity of the situation, I really must protest I don't believe that it's becoming of a Starfleet officer to continually refer to the Ferengi in such disparaging terms on a racial level. Also, the Federation is not in the habit of taking hostages. Forgive me for speaking out of turn, Commodore, but I would think that would be on you to suggest that. Lieutenant um, Commander, the only thing hostage? I am such... That the was the term that he used. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm merely yeah. suggesting that while testing the product offered to us by the Ferengi, that their salesmen be aboard. If something were to happen and then Ferengi were to attack the vessel, they would be, they should be unwilling to so casually kill their own people. Well, given the abject degeneracy of the Ferengi as you've described them, perhaps they would. Why don't we just ask him? if we can test it out. I'm pretty sure he just gave it to us on a Lotus pl platter. We need to do, we need to do a test drive on this thing. Yeah. Yeah, we do. I support this notion. Can you remind me again, how much more quickly incrementally we will be going. So Fenrir, for example, uh, Fenrir can go a maximum of about 0.6 light years an hour. The proposed uh, new speed would be approximately one light year an hour. So it's, if I remember my numbers correctly, it's basically the difference between, say, uh, 40 miles per hour and 60 miles per hour. So you get there a lot quicker. Okay. Um, 
Now, the important thing to note is you can't slap this into the runabout. The runabout can't go 9.975. No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's not the... Intent. Not with that attitude. Um, <laughs> I think the math is if we can it's, use the it's... thing, we'll get there in three hours instead of five hours. Correct. Um, zero, would this... Would this... Uh, this dilithium fit our warp core? As I believe most refining, refining, most, hold on, English is being difficult right now. <laughs> As I would believe most processes that would result in refined dilithium pretty much have at this point in time created a universal size. So I would not doubt that this crystal would easily fit into current dilithium slots located on the Fenrir. All right. The issue we would come across is traveling at a much higher rate of speed. We may have to adjust power systems to protect the structural integrity of more vital systems as opposed to as if we were traveling at normal warp. May I ask, Lieutenant, would it be possible to engage multi-vector assault mode and take only the medical section of the Fenrir? That would allow us to, well, man it with a skeleton crew of medical officers. Right, we could leave a gamma section behind as collateral. <laughs> it would be possible. The thing is, is with the power fluctuations currently that the Fenrir is currently undergoing at this time, hoping that upon MVAM um, working, that one of the individual ship's reactors doesn't decide to give out. And now you have a ship that is dead in water. A reasonable concern. All right. Um, I want to talk to. What was his name again? Papak or Papax. Papak. P A P A X. Papax. Okay. Um, open a channel. Someone. Right. I'll do it myself. <laughs> yeah. So uh, appearing on the little view screen in the runabout is uh, Damon Papax, and he says, "Ah." I trust that you have seen the quality of what I'm offering. I have observed that this exists. Quality needs to be tested, as I'm sure you know. I'm proposing a little road trip. And I'd be delighted if you came with us. There is I'd like a... to test this in my warp core. Ah, well... There is a Ferengi rule of acquisition number 363. You should always give your customers what they want. Very good. Does it uh, sound like a rule? <laughs> uh, we are going to retrofit this into our warp core and we'll keep in touch. Of course. And I would be happy to come over at your convenience. Sure. Um, that sounds good. And then, yeah, I think uh, what we do next. Uh, Captain. Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to let you know that uh, I don't think there's any such thing as a Ferengi law that says the customer is always right. I'm just warning you here. Well, I haven't read all the rules of acquisition. Yeah, so. but you know, I've 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 known a few Ferengi, and uh, you know, it's all about uh, lining the pockets. To I be mean, fair, they're not bad people, but uh, you know, it's just a an understanding that they like profit. Is it common knowledge that Rom is or was the Grand Magus? Oh yeah, in fact, I think even by your era that you're in, by twenty four twelve, Rom is still the Grand Magus. To be fair, I don't think he said the customer is always right. 
It's he give said, the customer give the they customer want. what they want. Well, yeah, but well, we'll see. I'm just, uh, you know, just a uh, hey, caution. Yeah, that's, that's your job. And if I may, the customer's always right until you have their cash. The rule of acquisition 159. What's cash? What's that? <laughs> I don't know. I've just memorized the rules of acquisition. Latinum? Did you say Latinum? I think I got something in my ear. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <clears throat> I don't know, but that Ram guy, he seems really cool. Like, he lets women wear clothes and stuff. Sorry. I Thank goodness for shut. that. No. <laughs> um, okay, great. Let's get this going. Zero. Yes, Commodore. Let me know if you have any trouble. We'll do Commodore. And you know, Zeke, one time I got some Joe's pizza from a Ferengi. That's incredible. I didn't know Joe's had spread out that far. Oh, no, they kept it like uh, in stasis and they sold it. It was pretty cool. Pizza in stasis? This revolutionizes everything. Yeah. yeah I it got it. It was extra cheese and pepperoni. Wait till I tell Jensen about this. He's going to flip. Oh, Don't forget boy. to also mention to him that diseases can also be kept in stasis. <laughs> that, you know. Zero. We really have to work <laughs> on your communication <laughs> skills. Is there to... something wrong with my vocal processors? Up here, not down here. Well, let's get going. Hey, Kamala, yeah. You want me to take us back to Prometheus? Uh, Cerberus. What's the name of the ship? Fenrir. It's the Fenrir. The, the Fenrir Zeke. God, yes, please. Someone get us back there. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're actually going to cut ahead just a little bit. Um, the dilithium is installed perfectly. Uh, of course, the daemon has come aboard. He is present. And, you know, since time is of the essence, you just sort of push the shiny red button and get going again. And zero, you, let's say, for example, let's cut to the bridge here. Uh, all of you are present reading the runouts. And zero, you are literally calling out the warp factor as it climbs steadily. Well, not, maybe not quickly, uh, above 9.975. And sure enough, you get to warp 9.992, or approximately 8,888 times the speed of light. And you sort of cap there. Uh, Tavi is going to shadow the Ferengi that's on the ship, following okay. pretty much everywhere. <laughs> so that pretty much means you're now in a position where I can get you to talk to yourself. Excellent. Um, Zero will uh, link Vassar, will link Vassar's readout to his readout. Um seeing as they both would be able to process the information coming at a much faster rate than the other people. Mm -hmm. uh, Williams, any word from the colony? Yeah. There hasn't been, which is worrying. Nothing since the initial distress call. I've acknowledged the single signal and, and let them know we're on our way, but nothing back. Does anybody feel that shaking in the deck plates? As long as it's not from the ceiling. Yeah. Fair because point. I find it funny. No. Spending two threat. Williams, <laughs> the floor panel behind you just sort of jostles a little bit and just comes unhinged. Or not unhinged, like it pops up out of like the resting place that would be like it's on slats and it just kind of comes up like a tile floor and just sort of is askew. It's gonna Williams is gonna put his foot on it, sort of push it back in and keep some weight on that one. Then it's funny enough, you do that to one, it happens to another, and then another, and at that point you're at a feat, so maybe you rope in another ensign, and you're, like, you're, you're starting to play basically whack-a-mole with the, the floor tiling. So when they fixed the ceiling, did they take the bolts out of the floor to do it? Well, and this is for Pox. Well, if you are in need of self-sealing self -sealing stem bolts, I happen to have those as well. Do you have any reverse ratcheting routers? I think they would work better here. 
I believe we do, yes. Why do right, the just... self-sealing stem bolts have to be self-sealing? Why can't you just seal them yourself? I've never understood that. He is with hopscotch, clearly. And Damon uh, begins to say, well, and then I push this button. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you go to red alert as suddenly there's a violent lurch uh, in the entire ship. Report. Is this so, the lurch where we like fly out of the chairs? Oh, yeah. Everybody okay, cool. out of their chairs. Cool. Including the hologram whose emitters are based on stability. Yeah, so I guess everybody but Vassar, basically. I just kind of stand there, though. I don't even have a chair. Then you are definitely on the floor. Vassar is conducting an analysis of the emergency readouts. All right. So uh, there is a rapid acceleration in the matter-antimatter reaction. Is this boosting us beyond the 9.992 speed? Yep. You're now at 9.993. Zero to Jensen. Uh, Go ahead, sir. What did you do? I... I, I'm having my lunch. Who's in engineering then? Stand by. <laughs> Ironically enough, I believe the next person that would be in engineering is actually Ensign Murray. Zero to Ensign Murray. Uh, yes, sir. I'm assuming you are about to ask me why we are... Uh going very quickly yes well sir uh here i'll uh i'll feed it to your station and then yeah i'm gonna give this to you free because you've got six momentum and uh feel free to uh flavor that as you will warp chamber no now, initially, I had planned this to be uh, in the engineering uh, map, so reflavor that last line as appropriate. The SAR is maintaining a, uh, a head on all of the emergency readouts and maximum tolerances, structural integrity. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll give this. I'll give the uh, uh, Vassar access this to to you as well because I think you would be in on this, Commodore. Yes. It seems that uh, hopefully Mister Medic hadn't have done this, though I figured this is something he may do. Uh, apparently, there was a catalyst that was placed in uh, pla that was placed into the. Uh, matter antimatter reaction and it is a swarm of nanobots um by feeding on the reaction of mul they are multiplying at a steady rate and they are increasing the reaction rate itself um within an hour we should be at warp 10. the issue is is that we cannot shut down the reactor manual fail safes are fa have failing and the nanobots can't be beamed out due to a due to the vault of space of the reaction chamber um zero will turn around from the station and it looks up and it appears that mr q has uh decided to pay us a visit and yeah sure enough without even a flash of light archuleta you turn around there's a certain mr john delancey playing q uh, he is wearing uh, today and he says, ah, so it begins. I'm glad I got here just in time. And that's where we're going to take our break. So uh, we will be back in 10 minutes. Everybody stick around.
All right, welcome back. And uh, if you're just tuning in, the Fenrir has uh, basically begun accelerating out of control in the their Fenrir. haste in their haste to uh, basically get to a medical emergency. And not only is there a uh, Ferengi Damon aboard, but there's also a certain figure that is, shall we say, a figurehead of some parts of Star Trek, uh, Mr. Q, as it were. And Mr. Q repeats his last line of, oh, good, I got here for the good part. What are you up to? Oh, well, I'm just an observer. I'm here to see what you do next. Hey, Captain, do you want me to show this joker to the brig? Captain, no. I, are you aware you have a, a rodent in uniform? Who's asking me that? That's cute. You. Oh, um, <clears throat> yes. And I think I, he's earned that uniform more than you. Because I find it funny, there's a flash of light and Q for a moment looks like a copy of Tavi. Except just a little bit taller. And then he, he kind of looks around, looks at himself, shakes his head, snaps his fingers, returns to normal Q. Eh. Too limiting. Do you mind? We're kind of busy here. Oh, I know. That's why I'm here. I'm not going to help with your... Snaps. Why would I help you? That would ruin the fun. Besides, you're about to make another very important decision, which I'm sure all your officers will mutiny about again. Ooh. Oh, but maybe I've said too much. <laughs> um, no, go ahead. I'm just do whatever. No, uh, no. She's... I, I, I have said too much. I will simply uh, observe from elsewhere. Snaps his fingers, a flash of oh, light. God. Q is no longer on the bridge. Um, Zero, what's the status here? Are we... What's going on with these nano things, bots? We are still accelerating at this time. And how are they interacting with the... She looks over at the daemon for like a second. Crystal. <laughs> they are causing the crystal to utilize its full uh, lattice work, which is causing the antimatter matter reaction to spike in its current uh position which is leading us closer to warp 10 all right she's gonna turn to the daemon and be like what is going on uh well and as the daemon begins a uh, long roundabout way of saying this isn't my fault i didn't expect this to happen rast and tavi both of you, remember that voice that Archuleta was, you know, hearing before? Both mm -hmm. of you are now hearing that very same voice. Almost like that omnipresent whisper in the back of your, your head that, you know, every time you turn to look, nothing. Um, Rast is going to put his hand on the, on the console to steady himself. Mm -hmm. And he's going to um, try basically to do a telepathic sweep to find the source of the voice. Okay. Uh, why don't we make this a insight and science or an, in, you know, let's do an insight command. I'll give you insight command and, uh, let's make this a difficulty of four. All right. And you are at six momentum at the moment. Yeah, I see that. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend a little bit of it. Okay. Uh, to give me two extra dice. All right. And let's see how this works. Survey says... Ciao! Ugh. Only two successes. So you're not able to really get a feel for anything other than those who are here, like on the bridge. So it's not like... Um, not like an omnipresent sort of feel. Like, it's just you're just seeing the people on the bridge at the moment. And uh, Tavi just starts looking around. Hey, does anybody else hear that? It's like a whisper and like... 
Zero will look at uh, Tavi. Uh, yes, while the Ferengi attempted to drone on about how this wasn't his fault, I lowered my audio processors. Oh, no. What it, it, you were referring it, to? It's not the Ferengi. Uh, it's like it's another voice that I, like every time I turn around and look at it, it's not there. Lee would go over to uh, the console and retrieve a medical tricorder. Mm -hmm. and he would like to take a scan of Lieutenant Tavi, sort of kneeling down in front of him, opening up the tricorder and running the, uh, the sensor module over his, his head. Reason science, please. Difficulty of three. Actually, spend some threat. We'll make it a difficulty of four. Okay. Uh, would any of my talents apply, like uh, 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 testing a theory? Not quite yet. Okay. Then I'll but use your reason augmented ability. reason would. Okay. And that was science reason? Yep. And I'll buy would anyone mind if I bought an extra die for that? Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Remember it is I'd say, I'd, four. I'd say dump them to go forty twenty. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And an applicable focus, infectious diseases. I'll give you infectious diseases. So that's three successes, which means you do not pass. However, I just remembered you specifically uh, went and got a medical tricorder. He does have an extra die because of his enhanced. He also has augmented. So actually, yeah. so a combination of two things. You have augmented reason, uh, which means that that's four successes, which is what you need. But you also used a medical tri... Oh, yes. Complication because uh, of augmented ability. That's what I was going to check next. Okay. So you have four successes. You have a complication. Uh, but because you're using a medical tricorder specifically, the difficulty actually comes back down to a three. So you get a momentum and a complication here. Um, the complication is that... Um, you know those nanobots that are in the warp core? Let's just say they're starting to take up residence within Mr. Toppy. Oh my. Um, uh, tell, tell me straight, Doc. Well, uh, Lieutenant and uh, Lieutenant Zero, uh, we have a serious problem. The warp core is not the only thing that's been infected by these nanites. I think, and I'd like to take a scan of myself. Do I? Am I infected as well? Yep. Yes. Uh, I believe that we have all been infected. This is not an issue pertaining, it seems, to the dilithium. Hmm. We should initiate a quarantine of the bridge and uh, crewman Zeke. Just uh, to be sure. Com Lieutenant, uh, Commander Tobin, if you don't mind, or Commander Lee, if you don't mind sending me the uh, frequency of the nanites, I can scan the ship and go through security logs to see when we would have been infected by them. Uh, of course. Um, and I would transmit the medical data to him. Yeah. So, Zero, if you want to roll me a insight engineering a difficulty of two. Uh, cybernetics? I guess technically. Experimental medicine would be the other. I'd give you experimental medicine, yeah. Uh, and then uh, inside engineering. And then I will give you, you said difficulty two? Difficulty two. You do have one momentum at the moment. I'll give you a threat for an extra dice. Okay. And that is four successes, which means you are now at three momentum by my count. So you're looking at the logs, and yeah, you know exactly where you got "quote unquote" infected. It was at Riza. But this, before you start to wonder if this is connected to last episode, no, this is this is something completely different. It had nothing to do with the hollow emitters. Um. Zero to Lieutenant Alel. What do you want? Oh, God. Be advised that 
the crew is currently infected with nanites and we may need medical uh, help in preventative measures and to also find a way to remove these nanites. <laughs> Are they presenting any symptoms? Uh, Lieutenant Junior Gray Tavi has been hearing voices. I would suggest checking in with Jensen as well. Once he finds out, it may be become yep. zero out. <laughs> and because I find it funny, we're actually mm -hmm. going to cut to sick bay where, uh, you know, well, you've just heard all this. You're telling Commander Saneri about it. Uh, but it's right about then, of course, that Mr. Jensen walks in. Now, Jensen, you're having a great day, you know. Uh, <laughs> everything's going great, you know, nothing to complain about. You know, you're just here because, you know, maybe you want to get your uh, daily checkup to make sure that you don't have Rigelian flu. Uh, hey, Lieutenant. Uh, me again. What can I do for you? Uh just got a little scratch in the back of my throat and I figured ounce of prevention, pound of cure. Let's just get it checked out now. Okay. Why don't you have a seat? I'll be right with you. All right. She's going to go swipe her medical tricorder off of the docking station and kind of exchange a look with Sineri and then go scan him. Mm-hmm. So, I have something interesting for you. You scan Jensen, nanobots. You scan yourself, nanobots. You scan Jensen again, no nanobots. Jensen, uh, tell me about your shore leave. What'd you do? Anything fun? She's going to keep scanning him. Like she's still collecting oh, data. Um, well, uh, I, I went to the gift shop, um, found this really interesting sculpture, and uh, decided, you know, I'd pick it up, right? And I don't know <laughs> what it was about this sculpture, but let's just say that the uh, uh huh. Well, you know, it was a good, it was good. The shore leave was good, Lieutenant. Um, brisk. To, and you only went to the gift shop and your accommodations? Oh, I mean, my accommodations. Um, this is, uh, this, um, uh, I met this fascinating, uh, just fascinating Orion. Um, went to her accommodations. Um, some of the Rysians, I went to their accommodations. And it's about this time that Commander Sineri comes out of her office and goes, what the hell? Judson, what did I tell you about fraternizing with Orions? Uh, okay. But, you know, I think, I think that they get, generally speaking, they have a bad reputation, and from my experience, it's largely undeserved. That's not the point, Jensen. In fact, hello, can I see your tricorder real quick? Uh-huh. Takes it, runs a scan of herself, scans Jensen, scans herself, scans you. Maybe, Commander, I took every conceivable precaution. Jensen, enough about your sex life. We have an actual crisis on our hand. Why are you not infected? Not infected? Not, not infected with what? And Scenario gets a very evil grin and says, well, the nanobots that are making everybody hear voices. Yeah. <laughs> And Jensen will like get up and begin to like scurry towards the door of sick bay to run. And actually, Jensen, as you get up and start to move towards the door, you begin to hear voices. 
Actually, it's very specific voice. As in a flash of light, you guessed it, Mr. Q is behind you whispering in your ear. He's whispering sweet nothings, which I will not attempt to replicate. But it comes from Q nonetheless. Look, it's just, oh, Commander, I'm, I'm hearing the voices and I seem to be hallucinating. A middle-aged man in an outdated Starfleet uniform. He's saying horrible, horrible things. And Q just sort of is taken aback at that and says, Well, excuse you, I am not middle-aged. I'm in my prime. Correction, he says he's not middle-aged. He's in his prime. They can okay. hear me, you fool. I'm real. Uh. Oh, no. Nope. I'm not falling for this again. And Q just sort of twitches his head to the side and says... Had enough visual and audio hallucinations to... I've been, I've been around the block a few times. Q turns to Alel, and uh, he just sort of raises an eyebrow like, what's up with him? You tell me. No, I may be no, no, an don't, don't omnipotent entity. Even I don't know what's wrong with Mr. Jensen. Look, he's making progress. That's all that matters. Um, we have clearly an issue here. She looks at Saniri like, any recommendations? Uh, don't. Shouldn't we investigate ways to purge these nanites? Oh, yes, purge away, because that wouldn't be violating your prime directive at all, would it? Does the prime directive include provisions for being infected with the a life form taking it's away our agency such a small mind but again that's why i'm here i want to see how you bungle this one up snaps his fingers flash a light q is gone again oh that guy's exhausting you know it's it's been uh, my experience <laughs> that you don't engage with them Look, I can't help it. He's so demanding. <laughs> it's, a, it's a talent that you develop with time. Just like anything, I guess. How old are you? Uh, I'll be... I was... 28. Six weeks ago. Mm. And Scenario right. actually looks, like, looks a little concerned. Wait. You had a birthday recently? Why was I not informed? Oh, uh, because you're terrifying. You're too busy with the Orions. And as Scenario sort of like goes, hmm, well, uh, we're actually going to cut back to the bridge. Where at this point, uh, the daemon is no longer there. Uh, he's been taken to quarters by security. Uh, but uh, Lee, you're still, you know, running tests on both uh, Tavi and pretty much anyone else that you care to scan at this point. And everything you see is the same. Everybody is infected. Well, Captain, it seems that my initial supposition was correct. We have all been exposed. And, well, it happened if you're condition in uh, uh, the mess hall was any indication before we even encountered the Ferengi. Um, let me ask you, do you know what those voices were trying to say to you? Can you make out anything? GM? Nope. Couldn't tell at the time. Um, no, I... It was too quiet then. Hmm. So who's hearing voices now on the on the bridge? pretty much everybody everybody is there any like any message coming through there to anybody no nothing solid just is again same omnipresent volume whispering. not stronger okay same volume um using the free question that i didn't um, didn't ask when i ran that scan mm -hmm. is there a particular location 
in the brain in which they are congregating. Yes, indeedy. And I was very glad that uh, you thought of that. They are congregating in the, if I remember my brain correctly, correctly, that is the, is it the proprietal lobe? The one that handles speech recognition? Um, whichever one handles language and speech recognition, that's where it is. I think it's the proprietal lobe. I'll look it up. Captain, I would submit that these creatures or these nanobots may in fact be attempting to communicate with us. They're congregating inside the language centers of our brains, or at least the brains of everyone I've been able to scan thus far. If we somehow found a way to hyper-stimulate their development, we might be able to initiate communications. We know that they respond to certain frequencies of energy, those which we associate with dilithium. It might be possible to, I guess, encourage their reproduction inside the, the brain of a willing host. Well, what are your thoughts on, and she looks at the XO, um, potentially trying to make contact with them? I did with try to reach Cillo, out. whatever it's called. I did try to reach out uh, telepathically, but I was unable to uh, make a connection. We've been able to increase your abilities before medically. Are you? Would you be willing to do that? Time is kind of of the essence here. Yes. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a doctor, but every other time he's been trying to contact some sort of organic life form. Is it possible that these nanites, well, they maybe they are sentient, but they may operate on another wavelength. This reminds me of one of the old Enterprise D missions. Uh can't remember the start date, but Lieutenant Commander Data was able to successfully utilize himself as a conduit for communication with an artificial life form that had taken residence inside the ship's computer. That would be coinciding with my suggestion as well, Commodore, um, using the basis of either uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Hale's uh, head that is still in Medic's old engineering lab, or even <laughs> utilizing myself to create a binary, at least a binary form of communication where it could be a yes or no uh, system, we would be able to determine sentience of the nanobots. It's right about then. I'm spending two threat. Tavi, the voices are getting louder. Oh, he's going to try to. He's going to try to listen. Uh, Tavi, I'd like you to roll me a insight and command, please. Oh yeah, this is my specialty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, difficulty of one. The life of a security officer. You know what? I'm going to use a momentum. <laughs> All right. And I probably don't have any sort of specialty here. I so, mean, this uh, is technically an activation of Tavi. You could give him a new focus. Yeah, but nothing really applies in here. Fair enough. Oh! Hey, you oh! get the one success anyway. <laughs> Tavi, it's not so much a sentence that you catch wind of. It's more a singular word, and the singular word is who, just who, nothing else. Oh, Captain. Oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, Commodore. Yes. Uh, I heard a word. What was it? Who? This isn't like a joke, like Abbott Costello type thing. This is like, that's all I heard was the word who. Abbott and what? Um, I'll tell you later. Who? They could be asking who we are or who they are, depending on their current level of evolution. Um, 
are you able to respond, Tavi? Uh, what what would you like me to say, ma'am? Um, us. Okay. He thinks real hard. <laughs> us. Oh my god! I love it. Amazing. Yeah, and uh, you do that, and the word changes from who to why. Oh, 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 Commodore. Yes. Uh, they said why. And I was just going to say because, but I figured you'd have something better to say. Um, Explore. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Explore. <laughs> this time I'd like you to roll me a presence command, Mr. Tavi. It's great. All these great rolls for Tavi. Difficulty of two. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, use another of those momentums. All right. Oh, oh my god. Oh! That is oh, oh. two complications. Oh no. Oh. We're all good. <laughs> so here kill. Tavi. This is gonna sound weird, but basically, Tavi, your vision begins to tunnel. And the more you try to fight it, the more everybody else seems to get they, they seem to get farther and farther away. It's almost like you're going through that that uh, tunnel at the end of Space Odyssey where, you know, you're just seeing lights and colors. They're zooming by. And uh, the second complication is that now Rast is the one hearing the voice that is saying, why? Oh, it's so pretty. He's just staring off into nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and Rast is like, we are trying to explore. What is it that you wish to say to us? All right. This time, I'm not going to have you roll because Presence Command is Rast's thing. <laughs> you get another word back. It is now how. The... Uh... The current word, um, Commodore, is how. If there was a way I could interface, I could show them an MSD of the ship. Hide more vital information, but at least a layout and an idea of the ship in space. And uh, Rast will reply... Um, with spirit and goodwill. Ooh. Complicated thing to discuss with an uh, entity that has only used one word. So why don't we do an actual presence command here? Spend threat here. Difficulty of five. Uh, I'll buy one die. <laughs> okay. And uh, let's see. Remember, you do have determination. Yeah, I might do that. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm going to give give us back that momentum. I'm just going to use determination. And uh, the one I'm going to use is there's no such thing as the unknown, only the temporary hidden. I like it. And uh, behavioral analysis? I'll give it to you. And there's an extra uh, extra three successes to this roll. Wow, that is oh. uh, six successes. Quite impressive. So you get, uh, I believe you're at two momentum. So the new word is show. Uh, now they wish to, now, now the uh, word is show. And with that, um, Rast is going to 
try to replay in his mind and trying to give it to the entity a lecture that he attended on the prime directive at the academy tell you what if you give me that two momentum you have that idea will come across perfectly there you go (laughs) all right so uh the idea does you know the entity does seem to be somewhat accepting because the voice dies down however tavi still seeing those pretty lights and you feel yourself lifting off the floor you know maybe you have a slightly out of body experience (laughs) as everybody looks and tavi is literally levitating off the floor and almost like in an ethereal ephemeral sort of form behind him specifically behind his head is a form that has multiple appendages uh, almost like a squid mite so some form of uh, tentacle or some form of uh, what's it called um phalange whatever the like the cells that you know do the the moving thing through the water mm-hmm. i'm drawing a blank at the moment but what i'm getting at is just basically imagine like a squid forming behind tavi uh now it's very see through uh it seems to be composed of almost like a shifting cloud. So there's either enough nanobots here that you can see them, which is quite a large amount, or something else is at play here. But that's what's going on at the moment. And they seem to be attached to Mr. Tavi. Oh, this is, this is, this is cool. Hey, do you see that over there? Wow. This is like that one time I ate that mushroom. <laughs> uh, Commander Lee? Prognosis? Hell if I know. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, okay. Um, I'll take out the tricorder, remove the medical attachment so that it's a regular tricorder again, and then mm-hmm. start scanning the, uh, the apparition. Is it trying to find out? Is it actually something that has uh, manifested because it's a kind of collective illusion or delusion, etc.? Okay. Uh, roll me a reason engineering difficulty of one. Okay. And I'll use augmented ability reason. Mm-hmm. So 2d20. And Vassar assist by uh, using his neural network to see if there's any sensor presence for the swarm yeah i'd let it happen you would also you would be doing a reason science with sar sensor operations focus oh yeah would would vasar be infected as well vasar is actually clean if you were to check vasar he's clean so that's two successes on my end Mm mm-hmm uh, cybersecurity or theoretical physics? We'll give you theoretical physics. That is a total of four successes, so you actually get two momentum. Very nice. Going to give you guys another handout. Was was that difficulty a one or a two? Uh, that was a difficulty of one, actually. Thank you for reminding me. So that was actually a three momentum. So... Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. So that should, I'm just quickly changing one line because things have developed differently than I thought they would. All right. Both Lee and Vassar, you should now see a nanobot analysis handout. And actually there is a small word. I have an extra then in there. Your opinion on the matter, uh, Commander Vassar? I was hoping for yours, but if your results were the same as mine, it appears that we have had quite the event on Fenrir. My sensor analysis indicates that these nanobots 
manifested spontaneously on the ship. That does seem to be the conclusion that I've reached as well, and yet that seems an astronomical impossibility. While we determine their origin, perhaps it is more important to determine the rapidity with which they are multiplying. Well, as microscopic life forms, they seem to be reproducing at an alarming rate, making successive improvements in each generation. They're growing larger and more intelligent, more capable with each new iteration. Even I'm flying! <laughs> Commander Vassar, would you mind perhaps sedating him? I, I don't like him being conscious while he experiences this. Uh, Regardless, um, I don't, uh, he just stares at Tavi. I don't even know what I was talking about. Um, uh, Vassar will attempt to move over to Tavi and Tavi, I apologize, but your s current mental state may unduly influence the developing nanites. And I'll uh, give him, you know, two cc's of a Mm. Uh, an appropriate sedative. All right. Go ahead and roll me a uh, control medicine. Difficulty of two. Thor's going to get slapped by these guys. They'd be like, no. No, 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 Hitavi. Now you uh, do have three momentum. Medicine. Um, I want to see what happens. Okay. Uh, and does xenobiology count oh, yeah. as a... Oh, yeah. Hey, two successes. Yeah, so Tavi, you just sort of gracefully go off to sleep. Hmm. Any reaction from the ephemeral nanite swarm? Yeah, I'm glad you asked, because yes, as Tavi goes to sleep, Tavi's body lowers to the floor it, like they don't just drop him but the you know Tavi's bottle goes to the floor and the nanobot swarm begins to coalesce into an actual form so they uh they're actually quite bigger now they're there like uh, maybe about that big are they exhibiting any kind of neuroelectric behavior on the sensors if you Something give me a momentum to... I will answer that question I'm a science officer. Don't I get a free question? You do. Correct. So, uh, yes, they are displaying a rudimentary intelligence now. Um, Lieutenant Commander, with their current level of intelligence, I wonder if using the holographic projectors, if we could have them mirror basic shapes and basic geometry to kind of gauge their current levels of intelligence. I'm spending two threat because at this point the ship rocks tremendously again. And uh, Williams, you're seeing that you're now at 9.997. Or 9.997 and climbing still. We have to find a way to get them at least out of the warp core, maybe even off the ship, if we can determine if they can survive externally. I recommend I attempt to connect with them via a neural link. Um, also, GM, mm -hmm. what's our ETA to the colony? good news is you're actually saving a lot of time you'll be there in about 10 minutes at your current speed well, means we're going to overshoot it in about 10 minutes mm -hmm. we have... we'll overshoot infinity mm. <laughs> yeah you want to know what a holographic oxalotl looks like <laughs> <laughs> um, see if you can link with them Bizarre. Yes, Commodore. 
All right, so this is going to be for Vassar. This is going to be a control and science. I believe this would be an appropriate difficulty of four. Um, is there a way that Zero can assist by uh, setting up the link and also probably utilizing his positronic matrix as a buffer zone to keep them from just taking him over? Yes, but I will increase the complication range to 18 to 20. Can I use determination? You certainly may if you give me a value. Um, as a spontaneous um, intelligence, mm -hmm. uh, it is a fundamental part of my programming to respect infinite diversity and infinite combinations. Mm -hmm. And I am... Uh, I am attempting with the utmost curiosity and a little bit of urgency on the side of Fenrir's imminent destruction mm -hmm. um, to implore a sense of, um, you know, using whatever appropriate imagery they would interpret um, to save themselves by leaving the engineering infected areas of the warp core okay i'd let it happen what, is, what does the point of determination get me you get two free successes to start your roll off with so i just roll normal dice and we add two to that yes now of course you can still buy additional dice if you wish there's just an increased cost yeah i'm gonna buy um an extra die for three uh for two Two. Oh, okay. So that's one, two, three, four dice. Ah, uh, uh, no, it would be three dice. Sorry. Okay. Three. Okay. And then I have uh, xenobiology, quantum mechanics, temporal mechanics, theoretical physics. I think maybe. those would all apply in some degree. So three dice and an applicable focus and for the marbles. All right, let's check that zero. Uh, so that is a complication, but I do see six successes here. So the complication is because zero, you're the buffer. Uh, for a moment, zero, your vision goes white and your positronic brain spikes in temperature as the connection for just the briefest of moments, maybe not even a nanosecond, uh, maybe an attosecond, like really, really short, but really, really intense. There is a connection between Vassar and the nanobot swarm. And you impart what you want to impart, Vassar. Uh, but then the connection is cut as zero. You literally crumple on the spot as your positronic brain uh, engages its safety shutoff mode to prevent damage. Uh, so the link is cut. Uh, however, at this point, the nanobot swarm has become almost 100% solid. It's maybe about 95-96%. And it floats away from Lieutenant Junior Grade Tavi, uh, sort of towards Lieutenant Commander Vassar. And it just sort of bobs there, just up and down a little bit in the air, just just floating there. I will rise to meet it. And uh, do I have do I have a neural link, or was it broken by the? You had a neural link. Now you, of course, could give me uh, momentum and a threat, and you could reestablish the link. But the caveat to that is, it would be very intense. Now. Is that a no or a? Don't now? do it! <laughs> Don't do it! <laughs> Um, it could like do shut it, the whole computer do it, down. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Vassar will cautiously hold that action um, mm -hmm. in in case it needs to be taken, um, mm -hmm. given his calculations that it could be damaging to his matrix after what it already did to my cybernetic colleague. Um, but he will extend hands out to the the swarm as it continues to manifest. All right. It actually sort of mirrors your pose where it offers uh, some of its phalange sort of uh, in the same gesture or at least an attempt to do the same gesture. 
it's demonstrating mirroring behavior. Pardon me, Lieutenant Commander Lee, would you be able to provide an update on the warp core? Well, uh, I will take a scan of the warp core. Matter, antimatter. Nine, 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 eight. It's, uh, we're still accelerating. The matter, antimatter intermix ratio is holding steady, but uh, increasing as well in light of the catalytic reaction from the nanites that are still in the warp core. The star will give you a momentum and a threat. All right. So what happens is as Vassar connects with the nanobot swarm is immediately all the consoles, and I mean all the consoles on the bridge simultaneously begin to spark and some even just full on blow out as you make this connection and the main computer is nearly overwhelmed. Um, and Vassar, you yourself, it's almost like if you were to stand at the bottom of a dam and then suddenly the dam is no longer there, there is just a torrent of data and information that slams into you and nearly sweeps you away. But you hear a voice, actually a rather coherent voice, and the voice says, hello, we are us. Are we hurting you? You are endangering the lives on this ship as well as your own. That is not our intention. You must leave the areas of this ship and Pissar will try to project imagery to demonstrate the warp core and the interior of the infected areas. And uh, as you do that, Williams, mm-hmm. antimatter, rea- antimatter matter reaction is returning to normal. Levels in the warp core look to be stabilizing. Should find uh, a, a, a source for you to occupy while we get to know you. It is okay. We no longer need your reactor. That is excellent to hear. What is your designated purpose? Unknown. That is a good start. Perhaps you can find purpose interacting amongst us. Are we hurting your biological members? The hmm, your occupation of their biology will eventually cause degradation. That is not our intention. We will rectify this. And then literally everybody who's organic on the crew, except Jensen. Uh, literally feels almost like a print pick in the back of their head where your spine meets your skull. <laughs> and when you turn to look, copies of the nanobot swarm, sort of that uh, squid-like uh, orange form of the nanobot sort of clouds out off of your literal skin and coalesces into these almost jellyfish-like creatures across the ship. Sar will be taken aback. Can we speak to them, or is Vasar still speaking to them? I mean, you could certainly I try. I mean, is he communicating via neural interlink still? Yeah, so all of this you have not been privy to. You just suddenly felt that pinprick in the back of your head, and then okay. there's, you know, big old nanobot swarm behind you. Okay. Lee would stare at the creature for a moment and then slowly reach out a hand in a kind of placating gesture, palm mm-hmm. up. It replicates it, sort of meets your stretched out hand with its own. Well, it's tentacle best it can anyway, so. 
And he would like to try to reach out and grasp the tentacle. Okay. You uh you actually feel rather solid, you know. It's it's not like uh sand like you maybe were expecting. It's actually uh rather solid, cool to the touch. Can you understand me? Yes. And everybody hears that. What? <laughs> Uh, on behalf of the United Federation of Planets, it, it's a pleasure to encounter your species. We are us. We are here to help. Not the first of their kind, Commodore. This is a most treasured first contact. Free will um, approach the larger swarm mm -hmm. near Vassar. And kind of like we'll glance over at Zero to see what's going on. Zero is still on the floor. Still shut down. Okay. <laughs> um, she will address the larger swarm. Mm -hmm. And as I am, I'm Commodore Briarchaletta. I am the captain of this ship. And from what we can tell, you manifested here and I would like to extend an invitation to you to stay here until you discover your purpose. That is good. We are here to help. Is there something you would like us to call you? We are us. Us. Okay. She's like, yeah, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> um, Thank you for giving us control of our ship back. It was not our intention. We apologize. Um, Williams or whoever's at the con, where's the colony? Well, Williams, when you check, mm. hey, you're about to hop, skip, jump it away. You could get there at impulse at this speed. Or not at this speed. You could get there at impulse, no problem. We're within impulse range. Very good. Standard orbit, Captain? Standard orbit. See if we can get it in contact with the colony. Understood. I'll try to raise them. And believe Yeah, you, uh, you actually get a reply. Uh, it's a very harried-sounding female voice, and the voice says... Oh, thank God you're here. Uh, we are experiencing massive neural degradation across every member of the colony. Uh, I've isolated myself. Uh, sorry, my name is uh, Dr. Butruger. Uh, I have isolated myself uh, and tried to find a solution, but uh, I'm at a loss. I Do you have a way to maybe treat 200 people at once? I think we just might um, pass along some of your medical scans to our sick bay and we will try to adapt a solution for you. And of course, Williams, you see the data stream being sent. Uh, however, Williams, your little squid thing uh, floats around and almost looks, quote unquote, at your screen. Mm -hmm. And then the creature says, we can help. We will assist. And then sort of en masse, all of the jellyfish-like nanobot swarms sort of almost undulate and begin sort of floating up out of the bridge through the bulkheads. Mm -hmm. And if you look on your scans, you see that they are now approaching the planet. We should inform uh, the, the colony. We should inform the colony. Yes. Yeah, uh, absolutely appraise them. Or open. Are they still on the comms? Oh, yeah. They're still on the comms. Okay. Um, what was her name again? I'm sorry. Bert Ruger. Bert Ruger. We encountered a new life form on the way here that seems to want to assist you. From our experience, they are almost harmless. I would let them do their thing. Underst are those orange jellyfish? 
Yeah, they're really cheerful. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll trust your call here, Commodore. We'll uh, stay in orbit. And then uh, there's a flash of light. And behind you is our lovable Mr. Q. And Q just sort of starts clapping like, well done, well done. I was half expecting you would just blow them out the nearest airlock. I mean, that is what you do with creatures like them, right? Not anymore. Oh, I see. So the bloodthirsty Commodore is learning her lesson. Oh, how ironic. Are you done here? No, there is one thing. I understand you have a miniature salat. Yes. That's from another Q. Yes, I'm actually also here about that. She wants it back. <sighs> I suppose objecting isn't going to do anything. No, but it might amuse me. Well, I don't exist for that, so. And then Q turns to Rast and says, Oh, and Mr. Rast, what you're thinking right now couldn't be farther from the truth. Flash of light, Q is gone. Hmm. He, he rubs his chin a moment. I was just thinking his presence was no longer required here. <laughs> and almost at that same time, uh, Bert Ruger opens a channel. Well, not a channel, just a message and says, I don't know what the hell these things are, but yeah, we're stabilizing across the colony. Uh, thank you, Commodore. Don't thank, thank them, us. They're... Thank us. <laughs> Yeah, don't I'm... thank us, thank us. That's yeah. great. <laughs> and ironically, I think that's a good place to end the session because that's everything <laughs> I was hoping for. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I just want to say a few things before we sign off. Your name of us, like when you thought who and you went us, that's their name. Like that's what they think they're called. Nice. That's awesome. Like who is I in, who are cool. we? Yeah. Oh Lord. So it was literally like, what are you giving as a name for them? So I found that pretty, pretty funny. Um, but yeah, what did you guys think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? You know, this was one of those first contacts that I wanted to change um, because we see so too often that in Star Trek that when you get into the situation of a new life form or nanotechnology, it's almost always bad, like to the point of where there's never a good solution. Like it's always these creatures just showing up and you have to eliminate them some way. Uh, mm -hmm. So I thought that was an interesting little twist on what we normally would see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it yeah, was a good way to do it. Was, it was great. I loved uh, Tavi like lifting off the ground. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to keep Tavi. some of them. I mean, if yeah. you want to keep some of the nanobots with you, you certainly could do so. All right, we'll talk about it. Yeah, Enough we'll talk off to make about a, it. To make a replacement uh, mini... Mini Salat? Yeah, yeah. They, they take the form of the Salat. Yeah, I love it. Wow. <laughs> Why is a Q always around when there's jellyfish in space? Well, because it's kind of Q's thing. I mean, you know, he's got a got an image to maintain. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, that is where I'm going to end the stream. Uh, but before I actually click that button, I'm going to have any viewers... Uh, go raid Mr. Th uh, Mr. Thox. Tell him I said hello. Maybe spam uh, Q is here. He'll get the message. But uh, that's where I sign off. A later stream.